We have an excellent, very interesting presentation by uh, Lu Chung Chuan from Singtel's uh, Group Digital Life uh, um, Department, and he's going to talk about the 10 shocking truths of Silicon Valley. Please give it up for Lou, everybody. Enjoy the, sh enjoy the presentation. You. Thanks. All right, good evening. I'm very aware that I'm between you and the results, and I'm also very aware that I'm in between you and dinner. So I'm going to make this uh, as fast as I can. Um, my name is Lou. I'm very happy to see all of you tonight. Uh, just a little bit of introdu uh, a bit of introduction of first my company. Uh, my company is Singtel. So part of you would not know Singtel, I presume. You would know Singtel as a, as a mobile carrier, but probably you would not know that Singtel today has half a billion mobile customers. Half a billion mobile customers across Asia Pacific, and we're here because we are very excited to work with you. Okay? And we are actually uh, one of the sponsors, Singtel Life Lab, which I work. I'm also the head of the hyperlocal division, so I run a couple of websites. The famous one is uh, we bought over Hungry Go Air. That's working with me right now. I also have Insing.com uh, with Australia, OptiZoo, and Eatability, and a few more. Now, what I want to share with you is really uh, not so much about Singtel, but some of my experience in my job. So in my job, actually, I, over the last uh, three to four years, I travel across the world looking for cool and wild technologies. I attend meetings like this. I have face-to-face -face engagement with many startups, and then I've probably met face-to-face -face in small chats and big chats uh, across to maybe 1,000 to 2,000 uh, companies. And I realized that there's something about startup companies that I, that I realized is that the failure rates are very high, and I wanted to find out how do they make it. So I spent, I decided to take a year of sabbatical, and I went over to Silicon Valley, and I spent a lot of time networking. In this one year of networking, I networked uniquely to people who succeeded. And these are people like Eric Smith himself, uh, I've met with Ash, uh, the MySQL uh, founder and a couple of other people. And you know, I, I met over maybe 100, 150 of them, and I did something what we call pattern recognition. I began to identify what are the patterns and what are the things I see, and today I'm here to share with you some of my findings. Some of the things I say are going to be controversial. It will not sound very nice to some of you guys. Some of you will be music to some of you guys. But I'm here to share with you what I've discovered. The first uh, statement I want to say is that many of you come here with a vision. Many of you start up a company with a vision of building a multi-billion dollar business. I want to encourage you uh, with this vision. But I also want to bring you the reality check that if you want to play in one country, and I've heard many, because we are Startup Asia uh, conference today, many of you actually played in one country. Some of you in Thailand, Indonesia, Singapore, blah, blah. I, I look at a whole gamut of successful entrepreneurs that have launched multi-billion dollar business, and I've confidently now said that really, if you want to play big, you have to play in multi-trillion dollar uh, markets. The US, Silicon Valley produced many big successful startups because their market is $15 trillion, $15 trillion in GDP. The whole of Europe, $16 trillion. China, $6.9 trillion. These are trillion dollar market that produce good startups. Why is it that Singapore produces, you know, for example, Hungry Gwear, uh, Hungry Gwear founders, they sold it to us at uh, uh, about 12 to 15, uh, 15 uh, million dollars. Why? We've they have been in in the US, that would be a, a much bigger number because our market is small. And that's why I'm here to share with you that if you want to play big, play in a trillion dollar market. Trillion dollar market, for example, Southeast Asia, if you play together with it, we're looking at four to five trillion dollar market. And I, I'm going to make a controversial statement to say that if you want to remain small, play small. <clears throat> Look at the list of the successful companies here that are listed on on the, the US stock market. These are very famous names, and if you look at the list, all of them play in big markets. Okay? And unfortunately, we don't see one that play in a small market. And this is where I want to encourage you guys. The second thing I want to share with you guys is that what I see as a pattern is that most of you, most of us, start with a end point in mind. And you want to say that this is a starting point, this is my success point, I want to be there. Over five years looking at thousands of companies, personally talking to 
150, 200 of the successful ones, I can assure you that success is a frontier. Most of the time, in fact, 99% of the time, the place that you plan to land is not the place you ultimately land when you're successful. And I also can tell you one formula for failure. Those people who fail are people who persisted on a single line of focus and, and when, they hit, uh, when we hit situation of, of where the business model is failing, they still continue to stick to it. Now, people who succeeded that I found happened with people who actually pivoted a business in small way or in big way. Success is a frontier. It is not a point. The next controversial statement I want to make is that the failure rates are very high. How high? I did a lot of calculation, do a lot of analysis to realize that the statement I'm going to make is that the failure rate are really phenomenal. Now, this is, this is not to discourage you. When I took over InSync.com, the website was, that was about 2010. InSync.com was, so, uh, was is, uh, at them wanted to be one of the Singapore hyper-local sites. The traffic was bad, the people was bad, money was burning and everything. When we went in, I said, we got to try a lot because we don't really know what works. So some of my colleagues are here, they will relate to you. We tried in one, in one year, 14 projects, 14 initiatives, big, small, whatsoever. Do you know how many succeeded? Two. Twelve went down the drain. But the two that succeeded brought InSing up. Today, I'm proud to say that InSing.com is the Singapore largest uh, hyperlocal site. And, and this is what I want to share with you in the next slide. You need, because of the high failure rate, you need to try a lot. You need to try a lot and try different things because chances are you're going to fail with many of them. The next uh, truth is more encouraging truth. I found that many an analysis of many companies, the Goliaths don't win. I'm talking about big companies uh, don't actually win. You know, I won't use Singtel as an example because we, are, we try to look ourselves as different. But big companies, don't be afraid of them. Most of big companies have a lot of disadvantage. I sit in one of them, I know. You know, they don't innovate well, they have bureaucracy, they have this, they have that, I won't say anymore. But really, you know, as a startup company, you do have a lot of advantage. You have flexibility, you have fire in your bellies, you have, you have, uh, you have ability to, to move, uh, pivot very well. And this is where I want to say another living example, borrowing my experience running in Sing. In Sing.com, took on Hungry Go Where. Hungry Go Where is our hyper-local site that, that do food search. So in, Hungry Go Where has launched, and then about a year later, InSync.com followed. At that point of time, now retrospectively, because I now know the Hungry Go Where founders, they are working with me now, Hungry Go Where saw in, uh, InSync, which is part of Singtel, and just said, we are dead, death before arrival. We have not even succeeded, and, and Singtel did not launch something to compete against us. Tr fast forward three years. Singtel, Singtel back in Sing.com, launched huge bus ads, print ads, everything. Hungry Gwear has only $5,000 marketing budget. They beat the shit out of Singtel in Sing.com, and in Sing.com humbly went to buy Hungry Gwear. I want to encourage all of you, David can win. David can win. The next truth I want to share is that um, Many of you come here with great products, sexy products. And I wanted to say that after researching all these companies, I can assure you that one of the formula for success is try to be Steve Jobs. Because I like to say that Steve Jobs is a one-man wonder. Many, I actually see a lot more simple, dumb products that succeeded. I don't know why. This company on the, sorry. This company on the left is a company called OnLife. Who has heard of OnLife? They are very busted. So OnLife streams uh, consoles, games onto the TV and was purported with no next sexy stuff. It was very incredible. We tried to caught them. They were really proud and they were, they were really the cool boys in town. Singtel almost went on their knees and begged them, please work with us. They refused. In the end, they busted. You know? It's, uh, it, it's, uh, it's sexy, but it's so difficult to understand by, by a common uh, business. I met another company. The company is called Tiny Prince. Who have heard of Tiny Prince? One. Tiny Prince make a product which the minute I say, you know what it is. Baby announcement cards. Baby announcement cards. How difficult can that be, right? I can't even imagine how to do it uh, without going through the, the UI and the, the flow. 
Baby announcement cards, that's what they, they bootstrap a company, they launch baby, baby announcement cards, you have a baby, you go online, put your friend's address in, send. That's it. They post the cards to the, the house. How simple can a product be? Is it sexy? Absolutely not sexy. Is it worth a lot of money? They sold the company, fully bootstrapped, without a single dollar invested, uh, a dollar in it, for $333 million. $333 million. Some dumbest product called baby announcement cards. This is where I want This is where I want to encourage one of the guys who was actually being uh, run down by, by our vicious VCs here. Um, I, do, I believe this gentleman is called Udi. He, Udi, Udi, sir, your name is Udi, right? You have this uh, chat app that has a few people sitting on it and people chatting around. I want to encourage you while the people there was uh, running you down. I launched we, we work with a partner and launch a, f a simple app called It's Me, I-T-Z-M-E. Go try it out. The product is so dumbass and simple called Facebook Voice SMS. How difficult is it to understand that? So with this app, you can voice SMS your Facebook friends. That's it. Simple as that. How? I mean, there must be 50 chat apps out there in the world, and I don't see why we can ever succeed in things like that. Three months, 800,000 users, 800,000, three months, okay? I believe in your product. Round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> the next fact I want to say is that uh, after running, I just stayed beside San Hill Road when I was in the U.S. I stayed there for a year. And after I, I've been running up and down San Hill, I realized that most of the VCs in San Hill Road, San Hill Road, by the way, sorry, for people who don't know, is where all the venture capitalists are in, in Silicon Valley. Most of them are not interested in Southeast Asia. Those that are, are interested is ready here. Okay, don't bother going there, to ask for money, and ask them to invest here. 99% are not interested. Just ask for VCs here if you want. This is something that I want to encourage you guys that think, uh, think regional over here. This is the next controversial statement I'd like to make. How many are Singaporean here? Please raise your hand. Proud to be Singaporean. Okay. Singapore, Singapore over the last two years have changed dramatically. The country I fell in love with, grown, grown up with, has begun to be not very inclusive. Somehow we treat our foreigners uh, as people who crowd our, buses, crowd our buses and MRT and people who drive their property prices up. I'd like to assure you that if you, if the, the fact that we, we have a problem with them is going to be beneficial to Silicon Valley. In Silicon Valley, if you're there, you mix well long enough, and I spent a lot of time there, there are very few Americans, man. Where the hell do they all Americans go? You know, they have people. They have people from all over the world, Russian, Kazakhstan, Chilean, South America, Latinos, you know, Japan, Korea, China, everywhere, some Singaporeans, some Malaysians, but, but I don't know where the Americans are. Why? Because they are a magnet for the best of the world. If you want to succeed as a community, we need to attract the best of the world. And today I'm pleased that to see a lot of the best of the world are here. We need to build on that. I'm going to end with uh, these two notes given a time, and I'll probably end it uh, in a way. And I need to reiterate again and uh, sound like a broken gramophone, that after looking at so many companies, identifying pattern, I found that one thing matters above all. It's just one thing. There's an X factor, there's more experience and funding ideas. Well. I personally have a long chat with all these few guys, sitting one-to-one -one with them and have a chat. Uh, Richard Fairbank from Capital One, uh, Reith Hoffman, Lincoln, and a few of the other guys. And I also talk to many of people of, of this league. One formula for success, I can assure you, passion. Passion, passion, passion. This is what it takes. I'm going to end with this story. I'm going to end with this story. So I was in the Bay Area in, uh, in Stanford University where I sit with some of the MBAs, the smartest MBAs uh, that we were sitting in. Excuse me for any Stanford MBAs uh, here. And then we're in a class and we invited one, a lady called Karen Trevinsky. She's about 50, 60 years old, run a bakery, run a bakery. And what she does is that uh, she was very successful in baking cakes and, 
and somehow one day, the CEO of Starbucks found her cake very nice and decided to buy from her. And today she supplies half United States, uh, half United States uh, uh, muffins and cakes for Starbucks. Can you imagine how big their business is, Starbucks? And of course, we have MBAs in the class telling, asking her, so what's your formula of success? In the two-by-two two matrix, where do you put position yourself? What CRM system you use and things like that? You know, in Hokkien say, that Kong Smisai. Of course, the poor lady who is uneducated, uneducated, never been to high school or whatever, sit there. <laughs> and she said, finally she said, I'm sorry, you know, ladies and gentlemen, I really don't understand what you're asking, but I just want to tell you I've got, I, I, I hope you by now see that there's only one reason why I did well, because I love to bake. That's an incredible answer, right? Because I love to bake. I'm, I'm going to end with this uh, note that I'm very, very confident that you don't need great brains because I've seen really not very good brains to succeed and I see very powerful brains that fail. You don't need sexy products. You don't need humongous funding. I'm sorry about some of the VCs here. You don't need humongous funding. You don't need 10, 15 years of experience. What you need is fire in the bellies and a glow in your eyes to be sustained. And I want to end with this note. I see it tonight in many, many of you. I wish you success, and Singtel salutes you. Thank you. <laughs>